Arginella pneumophila is a weekly gram-negative rot. It stains poorly with the standard gram stain. The media used to isolate Legionella pneumophila is the charcoal yeast extract agar buffered with cysteine and iron. This is very specific to Legionella pneumophila. That's how we isolate Legionella pneumophila and how we can get it to grow using this media. Legionella pneumophila is also visualized under microscopy using the Dieterle silver stain. We use the silver stain to visualize Legionella under the microscope. It is also detected by the presence of antigen in the patient's urine. Legionella pneumophila is a facultative intracellular organism, which means that it can live and reproduce either inside or outside of the host cell. Now, can you think of any other bacteria that are also facultative intracellular? Examples include Salmonella, Neisseria, Brucella, Mycobacterium, Listeria, Francisella, and also Yersinia pestis. Legionella pneumophila is certainly not alone. There are a lot of other organisms that are also facultative intracellular. So how is Legionella pneumophila transmitted? Well, it's important to point out that there is no human to human transmission. What we want to be looking out for in the clinical vignette is aerosol transmission from an environmental water source habitat. Things like air conditioning systems and hot water tanks. Legionella pneumophila is most certainly an organism that is transmitted through water sources. So you just really want to be looking out for these in the clinical vignette. So if asked about prevention, sources make a note of doing routine decontamination of air conditioner cooling tanks. For the treatment, first aid for the US Emily makes a note of using either a macrolide or quinolone. A little bit more about the diagnosis. We mentioned that it can be seen under the microscope using a silver stain and also grows on the charcoal yeast extract agar buffered with cysteine and iron. I do want to make a note that the diagnosis can also be made by doing the direct fluorescent antibody on biopsy. And we did say the silver stain too, and then the charcoal yeast extract, C, Y, E, D, Z for disease. What about the disease that Legionella pneumophila causes? Well, first let's talk about some predisposing factors, which for the purposes of the board exam, you can be looking for an elderly smoker, heavy drinker, or immunosuppressed. Don't forget that exposure to water aerosols. Also be looking for an atypical pneumonia, which is something we're gonna be getting into with regards to the disease that Legionella pneumophila causes. So one of the big things to be looking out for is what we call Legionnaire's disease. And what this causes is not a typical, but an atypical pneumonia. So in the question stem, the classic presentation of Legionella infection leading up to Legionnaire's disease is going to be including a very high fever accompanied with diarrhea, mental confusion, and a cough that at first is only slightly productive. So these are the things that we're going to be looking for with regards to that Legionnaire's disease. Legionella can also cause what is known as Pontiac fever, which is described as a mild flu-like syndrome. It's not fatal and causes a pneumonitis. Pneumonitis is a term describing inflammation of the walls of the alveoli in the lungs. Legionnaire's disease and the Legionella pneumonia that is caused is really a big one to be looking out for. And I want to close with a very high yield and unique thing to be looking out for with the Legionella pneumonia, and that is the fact that, I'm going to put it up here, the labs and the question stem can show not hyper, but hyponatremia, a decreased salt in the serum, okay, a hyponatremia. 
And a big question to ask here is why? The explanation I'm going to give is going to be as simple as possible. Legionella has the ability to affect the kidneys. I'm a terrible drawer, but let's just say these are the kidneys on each side. And what they can do is they can knock out what we call the JGA for juxtaglomerular apparatus. Legionella has the ability to knock these out and as a consequence, the patient will not be able to secrete renin. Angiotensin 1 will also be insufficient, as well as angiotensin 2, ALD for aldosterone. That will be insufficient as well. So a hyponatremia, a decrease in serum sodium, can definitely be seen by the Legionnaire's disease due to the JGA, the juxtaglomerular apparatus, being knocked out. And due to all these downstream effects, we see this decrease in sodium occurring in the serum. The hyponatremia can be most certainly seen in the Legionnaire's disease and can be a really important clue in the question stem. So I hope this was helpful and informative. Works cited and, and references can be seen in the YouTube description below.